Grosskirk, the truth seeker, on here with me. And uh, Derek and I, let's see, we, we probably were introduced to one another about a year ago. And uh, I know at the time, I'm like, who is this guy? But uh, the biggest thing is, uh, Derek, I, I just found that, that I just love your heart, your heart and, and your, your love for people and love for the Lord. So uh, we're going to get started right after this. Welcome to Kingdom Talks, where we engage leaders, teachers, creative artists, and everyday people in conversations that awaken listeners to new revelations of the kingdom age. All of our courses, community conversations, partnership links, and much more can be found on our website, kingdomtalksmedia.com. Now, enjoy the show. All right, so I'm sitting here with Derek Grosskirth, the truth seeker. Uh, Derek, uh, how long have you actually been doing your podcast? Because I think you've been doing this for quite a while, longer than I have. I know that. I want to say off and on since 2010 when I first got started, but they were called radio shows back then. We did a radio show, even though they were online, blog talk and those kind of things. But started in 2010, just off and on little Bible studies. And uh, and uh, my, my podcast came from um, uh, working full time job, driving a truck for like anywhere from 10 to 17 hours a day. And I would wow. be on the phone with, with friends and we would call other friends on three way. So we would have six people on the phone and I would try to keep them on the phone as long as I could because it helped, uh, it helped pass the day. But yeah. we would have amazing conversations. We'd be talking about uh, the scriptures. We'd be talking about spirituality, where we were in the Lord, encouraging one another, praying for one another. And then eventually it got to this thing like, man, I wish we could record this and give it to other people. I wish other people can sit in on these conversations with this deep stuff that people need to know. And so that turned into an open line radio show that I started back in 2010 called The Awakening uh, Podcast. Awesome, awesome. Well, and you know, one of the things that I, I love, you know, I love to have you on the show just because you bring a different dynamic to, uh, you know, the heart of the Father and, uh you know, bringing so many different people together that you have come out of a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, if, if you want to see, you can go watch some of the other podcasts that I've done with you. And uh, you've also uh, got your own show. So, you, you know, obviously people could go there. But, you know, so you've come out of a lot of darkness and you've you've stepped into, you know, the fullness of, I, I believe, who you are. You're, you know, we're all work, working toward a, a greater fullness. But, but just that you're comfortable talking to people of all walks of life and in that you're able to share the heart of the father and uh, i just think that's so vital and so important for this day and so have you had any interesting experiences lately with some of the podcasts or conversations that you've had you should um, say vodcast now right <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i mean all, all of them are, are unique and, and different and I, I try to switch it up there's been like uh man probably i don't know as i like my spiritual journey my roller coaster as this is right it's a journey it's not yeah. just a straight path or whatever so i, I tend to try to book those guests to the, whatever i'm into and studying or want to talk about and there was like and i would say two or three months where it was just probably more than that but just i did about 30 just straight christian episodes they were uh christian mystics and things like that so th that was cool but I like to switch it up, you know. I like to uh, I like to talk to different people and and see a different perspective and uh, a different point of view for the same things that we've all been looking at and see what people are saying. And so th that's the, one of the cool things about learning. Um, I posted a, just a status update the other day on Facebook, and I said uh, connecting, not converting. And I think I think that's that rings good. true for you as well. So I found so much power in just connecting with people, talking yeah. to people, listening yeah. to them, hearing them out. <laughs> And, and, and in, this, in the essence of connecting with them, I am converting them. But the goal is not to, hey, pray this prayer with me, come to our church. But in the end, they pray their prayer and come to our church. Yeah, and that's, that's the way it is. I mean, people need to know that, that you know, we're safe and that we're not just, you know, have, we don't just have this agenda to get them to think and believe like we believe. <laughs> now, Obviously, you know, I don't want anybody to think and believe exactly how I would think and believe because that eliminates the process of understanding the fullness of God. Uh, we are all different for the purpose of understanding a little bit different aspect of the Father. Um, 
Yet at the same time, we would love to see more people step into the light, the gospel, the good news, the really good news. Mm-hmm. Um, so in light of that, the, the gospel and the good news, um, have you had any conversations lately? You know, because we got this uh, race thing going on in the country, um, the COVID thing. We haven't had a show since all this, um, except when we did the the next stages with everybody. But just curious if you've had any conversations that have been enlightening for you or maybe that you feel was really strong and, and good is, you know, getting it out to the public to, you know, this is, you know, part one of how you can help change the world. Yeah. Yeah, for so, sure. I mean, I think um, how you change the world and was in light of where we are, you know, the Lord would have been working on me before all this stuff hit like it was and was like having me attack conspiracy theories before COVID hit. And then there was just, I, I mean, and I was making snippets of me conspiracy theories are dangerous there's a snippet where i go into i think it's timothy um uh where it's like think on these things what is whatsoever is pure whatsoever is virtuous whatsoever is noble whatsoever is true whatsoever is good report think on these things and so i tried to break that down with go to the opposite of it and the opposite of those things were conspiracy theories whatsoever is not true is a conspiracy right and so in this the scriptures are telling us how to think and how to renew our mind and walk in the spirit and so i did a video on that and i've, I've been real vi- vigilant and i didn't know why and right when COVID hit a whole plethora of conspiracy oh, theories yeah. and bill gates is trying to kill everybody the <laughs> mark of the beast ah everybody's freaking out and um and they're still freaking out and so you know- the lord put on my heart just to maintain the peace don't watch any of that crap listen to what god is saying from the throne we have direct access to his heart that's so good right there yeah you know and so i've been vigilant on that and um for for good reason you know and the lord was preparing me to 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 not give in to that stuff and entertain it or let it tickle my ears because we do it's so easy to get intrigued but you don't know what's going on and it pulls you away from the truth and the foundation and uh and the scripture says that we have a delicate faith and it's easy for us just to get off a little bit. Then we find ourselves that becomes our gospel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, even the shows we've done together, I've kind of been vigilant about some of that stuff. Yeah. You know, you talk about the conspiracy theories and, and stuff, and I am not big on those at all, at all. Um, and yet someone pointed out to me this morning that the, the last show that my wife and I did live, uh, which would have been, you know, on Monday, uh, obviously, this is going to air a lot later, but um, <clears throat> our Monday night news show, uh, the count, and I verified it, the count is stuck. You know, so the m- number of views yeah. is stuck at, guess what number? 666. 666. I'm like, okay, you're, someone's... You're not the only one. I had, I had a good friend of mine. He posted a screenshot yesterday. He released a song, and on Spotify or Amazon, it was at, for the day, 666. So. Yeah. Yeah. So someone sent me an email from Germany saying, hey, do you know your count on this is stuck at 666? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what's with that? How does that work? <laughs> yeah, I had I had a day, one day, and uh, we, we released a podcast, a different one that we were doing. And we started a Facebook page and we did several different things. And that day, um, my mileage on my vehicle was... Uh, 666 when I got back from my my route oh wow it's like I want to add another mile and then um I think it was something with my fuel uh, mileage that I was getting to was the same thing like everything for this entire day was 666 we had 666 views 666 likes in one day it's like oh wow this is crazy and so I just begin to look it up and to find, like doing the numerology and seeing what other takes were I know what we're trained and what we right, first thing yeah. that comes to mind but looking at that as being something that wasn't something as demonic or whatever, like a number being demonic or you're cursed because that number shows up or whatever the case is. But there's a lot of study and a lot of research out there about that number actually being a good number. And, uh, and the only time it shows up, it just says it's the number of man, six, six, right. six. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. so anyway, it was, it was cool for me to find an alternative view when yeah. I see numbers and I'm not, Oh, it's a bad number. Be careful. You know, and you know what's so bizarre is that particular show, you know, whether somebody somewhere somehow knows how to, you know, play with the, that, you know, YouTube and make it stick there. I, I have no idea. But 
but just that that particular one, we specifically did an engagement in the heavens to deal with the spirits behind all the chaos that's going on right now. So, you know, it being a, a vodcast, you know, centered around man, it's like, no, it was just the opposite. It was a vodcast where we focused on what is father doing and, you know, we were doing what he instructed us to do, which was to take these entities to the courts and do it as an ecclesia, as the church. And um, anyway, that, 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 we could go down that road all day long, but <laughs> it's just interesting. Um, it, it, it is making me, th you know, think twice about some of the stuff because I, I was like so negative on any of that kind of yeah. stuff really happening. And I was like, well, there it is right in front of you. So what yeah. do you do with that? Well, I think it, it, it lends to the fact that many of us Christians uh, are or were superstitious and not spiritual. We're calling ourselves spiritual, but we're just superstitious. We won't walk under ladders if there's a black cat that crosses in front of the car. You know, yeah. we, we get scared. It triggers some kind of old wives tale or something like that. So a lot of uh, uh, superstition has crept right. into the Christian church, for sure. Burning witches and all the people who are not even witches and you're killing them because you think that they they might be. Come yeah. on. Yeah. No, and, you know, and I, it doesn't phase me one bit. It just, it does raise, you know, raise the eyebrow and curiosity is like, yeah. yeah, what's going on, Father? You know, is there something I need to, to, to legislate against or, you know, or is this just somebody fooling around with something and having a, having a, a good time whatever way that might be? Yeah. <laughs> But um, so again, you know, how can we share something with people that would help them change the world? Because there's a lot of Christians out there who we talked about, I think, just a little bit before that, you know, there's a lot of Christians who, and especially the leaders, political leaders, religious leaders that are inciting more of the darkness and the garbage by the words that they're saying. Um, I'm like we really need to be looking to see what the father's doing because even in our best efforts, especially when our adrenaline is pumping and everything else, stuff comes out of our heart and our mouth that doesn't help anything one bit. It just simply incites and escalates the situation. And I don't know if you've got, I mean, I've got some things I'd like to share, but yeah. uh, I want to hear what your thoughts yeah, are. Yeah, I think that, um, I think there's about, I, Honestly, there's an endless amount, but let's say there's 40 different timelines or 40 different realities that are going on and we get to pick and choose which one is real for us. And in those conspiracy theories or even what we're being told by mainstream media or what we've been told from our parents, like whatever you believe <clears throat> shows itself to you and becomes real for you, even if it's not. Like, even if it's not, you begin to see yeah. that. You begin to see 666 everywhere. You begin right, to, right. man, I took 666 steps to my vehicle this morning. Oh, my God. All these numbers. And the only person that means anything to is you. That's where syncretizity, uh, 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 what synchronicity comes into play. That's where your spirituality, that's where your consciousness comes into play. Everything with, with your perception. So to change the world we got to change the way that we 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 view the world we have to change the way that we view people we have to change the way that we view god i mean we we there's some change that needs to happen so all of that for me is embodied within this story that i heard one time about a man who um um wanted to wanted to change the world and so um he uh wanted to change the world and he wasn't able to do that so he tried to change uh his country and the country was too big. He couldn't, he, his influence, his renown wasn't big enough to change the country. So he tried to change his, his state and nobody would listen. He couldn't change his state. Then he tried to change his city. Nobody would listen. Then he tried to change um, his family, you know, then he tried to change at the end, change himself. And that worked. He changed himself. And so um, at the end of his life, he found out that if he would have did it in reverse, that if he would have changed himself first and worked on himself, that he could indeed influence his family and his family can influence the city. The city can influence the nation and the nation can influence the world. And by him working on himself and doing the inner work, uh, he could have indeed changed the world. So I think that if there's enough people who understand that to do the inner work, and that's what we champion and so many people echoing that in so many different ways and, and, uh, and, and healing and, and beauty and, um, 
all of it is connected to our spirituality. So I think that healing ourselves and getting in the presence of God, doing the deep inner soul, soul work and things like that, uh, releasing trauma, and there's so many different areas and ways to approach that. But I think that doing the inner work, enough people doing it, that uh, it, 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 it catches on and other people want to know more because yeah. it's working. It's working. It's worked for me. It's worked for you. It's worked for so many countless people to do their inner work. And um, and, if the, and it's as simple as getting in the presence of God. It's as simple as re <clears throat> renewing your mind and reading the scriptures and just like in a daily thing. Right. And it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. But those are some of the daily keys to walking in the spirit. And I think that if we do that, then it's going to be contagious and it's going to we're, we're going to be sent out, as the scripture says, from um, Judea, Samaria, and then, you know, to the ends of the world. So, you know, just doing the inner work, walking yeah. in our calling, finding our purpose, our destiny and walking in that we'd be happy. We glow. Like I posted, uh, I don't know if you've seen, I, I posted some pictures yesterday of, uh, I was editing some podcast snippets and stuff. And there were several of them that I caught myself with a huge smile on my face. And I just, I did see that. It. Yes. And I was like, <laughs> there was another one as a screen. I was smiling. I was like, man, like, I'm in my element. I yeah. love the day. I love to wake up and do what I love for a living. Um, you know, even if it's not for a living, just doing what you love, being around friends and family, being appreciative and enjoying life. And so if you're in an existence that you don't enjoy and you're not having fun and everything is doom and gloom and we're going to die. And that's what the conspiracy theories say. You need to change it. You need to change the way that you view things, the yeah. way that you view people. Yeah. And if you change the way that you view them, they will change. They 100% yeah. will. You know, and I, I uh, love, you know, what you're sharing right now. And I want to go into it even a little bit deeper. Uh, it's like, what do you do with those thoughts when the, the fear stuff and all that starts trying to, to jump in and, and take over? <clears throat> and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, right after this break. Hey there. Thank you for joining Kingdom Talks. We are taking a short break to share with you the life-changing online course called Ultimate Impact. Gil and Adina do an amazing job taking the complicated and making it simple and applicable for your life. Ecclesia groups are using this course to shift their thinking into the next age paradigm. Yeshua spoke of power, authority, love, and oneness that we have yet to walk in. So if you're ready to deconstruct limiting beliefs in order to step into what Father is doing now, this course is for you. Sign up today at KingdomTalksMedia.com under the Courses tab. Now, back to the show. All right, so I'm here with Derek Grosskirth, the Truth Seeker, and uh, we're talking about how you can help change the world, because right now we really need this. Uh, we really need the Ecclesia. You know, the governing body of God in the earth to begin to step up and, and do the work that we're here to do. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking about transforming our minds. And, and one of the things I wanted to, to share real quickly was um, how do you deal with, you know, the thoughts that come in that, you know, you know, you don't need it, you don't want it. For instance, for me, um, there was some rioting that took place in Colorado Springs, uh, and they closed down Interstate 25. And I'm thinking, wow, that's getting a little close to home. And almost immediately, the door opened to a little bit of fear of what if they come to my house? You know, what if they come to my neighborhood? And, you know, so what do you do with a thought like that? And for me, I just immediately, number one, I don't give it the time of day. It's like, okay, that's a, a garbage thought. It's from the dark side. It's not anything I need to deal with, but I will step into the heavens and I will go to the throne of God on the sea of glass because what I'm doing is I'm taking that thought, take it captive, and I just present it to the Father and lay it down. It's like, it's all yours and it's no longer mine. Now that works for me, mm -hmm. but we're looking also for what can work for people, you know, everywhere because every tool is different. Every, you know, tool, you know, is not going to work for everybody, but some are going to work for some people, so on and so forth. So, uh, what do you, what do you do with some of those thoughts that kind of creep in and, and you have to manage them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like to, I like w what you said, you know, I like to, to do an ascension to really just go in deep into the, the presence of the Lord and, and get his heart for the situation. Um, but you know, that takes time, that takes energy and effort, you know, and, uh, 
music and uh, I mean, there's different ways to do it, but <laughs> in, in an instant though, I mean, I, I, I love to, uh, to be mindful and, and focus on the breath, you know, taking that, that uh, deep breath and, and then knowing who we are in Christ um, is huge. Um, yeah. And, and there's revelations and there's layers to that. We're always growing in that. And uh, I don't think we'll ever stop growing in that, but knowing our authority and our inheritance as sons and daughters of the most high. And, and when I pray for people, when I pray over myself, I, I, I speak the peace of God, the rest yeah. of God, the love of God. Those are my, my three friends, the peace, the love and the rest of God. So, um, you know, the world is, uh, is, is freaking out right now. The church is freaking out. Pastors are freaking out. They're trying their best to hold this stuff together, and I commend them. Um, but there's a lot of the energies on the planet right now. The energies off the planet, like we're being uh, uh, um, affected by. Like I'm getting, I'm, there's so many stories of people having mental breakdowns and and uh, a lot of stuff going on in our communities and stuff. And so, just to be moved with compassion and know that that's a, an, an attack on the mind, an attack on the psyche. And, um, and, and the biggest thing that, that combats that for me is the peace of God, the rest of God and the love of God. Let me get rest in my spirit, Father. And I just thank him because it's our, he's, he sends it. He's faithful, he loves us. It's already our inheritance. We just get to tap into it. Um, asking for his love just to kind of permeate those areas of my body, my psyche, my mind that, that needs love, that needs peace. Um, and immediately I take that breath and I'm conscious of his love. I'm, con I'm conscious of his peace. And um, the things that I, were, I, I, was, I was magnifying, whether it was fear, hysteria, fear for me is false evidence appearing real. It doesn't exist. You're making stuff up. You're yeah. seeing it out. It's, it's mm -hmm. birthing anxiety <clears throat> and hysteria within your heart. That is not our inheritance. So yeah. uh, um, we got to deal with that, you know, and it's a, sometimes it's a daily thing. And uh, so those are just some things that just knowing who you are, Father, I thank you for your peace. If you got to put on some music, whatever it is, sometimes I think you can get so close to it's instant, but yeah. you can instantly change the situation. But you go running to the father may take a day, may take <laughs> a couple of hours because you're just walking around. Hey, man, what if this happens? What if they what if they come here? What if the food runs out? What if this? What if that? And you start, you know, so hold on. You fed a, you fed. Uh, what was it? Uh, Elijah with with the Ravens like if you're gonna take care of me that's what don't one promise that I have is that you that I'm gonna be okay and you're gonna see out my destiny and my right, calling right. and in that <clears throat> come whatever may you know what yeah. I'm saying and so but and, but though the world's going to hell in a handbasket though the world is 10,000 at my right a thousand at my left no harm shall come now my dwelling that I'm gonna be okay that even though I'm go I'm walking through this storm I have a perfect peace that is unexplainable but it's attainable. So that's what we have to give people, that peace and rest of God that comes through Christ. Yeah, I love that. And and that is the key, is, is understanding our identity and who we are in Him. And that uh, we're able to, for me, because I have practiced it for so long, for me to go to the heavens and take that thought, you know, cap, to take a thought captive, take it to the heavens and lay it down, literally can be three seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah. It's just <laughs> because it's practicing His presence. Yeah. And then I, I started, you know, um, you know, thinking about it and just father laid it on me. Yeah, that's, you know, that's Lawrence's, uh, you know, thing, you know, practicing the, his presence. Um, but to take it a step further and start practicing our presence in him. So rather than practicing, it's nothing wrong with it, but rather than just practicing his presence around us and understanding that he's around us all the time, well, I want to start practicing my presence in him because in him I am perfected. In him I'm complete. And in him... I am wherever he's at, which yeah. he's everywhere. So I can instantly, you know, engage with him at any time. In fact, I believe that we are always engaging with him. It's just shifting our awareness to that existence of it. It's like Jesus when he's talking to Nicodemus in chapter 3 of John. And he says to him, uh, you know, it, now this is in the King James only. You'll see this section. But he says, uh, you know, after talking to Nicodemus, he says, and I am, you know, and I am with the Father now. You know, basically, basically is what he's saying. He's like, I'm there now. You know, I'm in the heavens now. Even though I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm in the heavens now. And we are. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So we really need to, if we're going to change the world, we got to start believing in who we are. And it's, it's that that is going to allow us to start changing the world. Because when we understand who we are, 
we have all the authority of heaven, heaven working with us when we are aligned with heaven. So that's the other thing is going into the heavens to see what the Father is doing so that we're aligned with heaven, not just doing our own crazy thing or our own thing that we think is right, yeah. because Father's almost always got a better plan. And he knows the grand scheme of things, the grand plan. And so we need to align with that. And when we align with heaven, man, there's nothing that can stop us. Nothing. You know, who can who can who can be against us when he is with us? You know, so you could say who can be against us when we're aligned with heaven? Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. I mean, that's what I I try to bring into the podcast with every conversation with that on my mind and um, and being tactful in conversation and um, but being an example. You got to show it. I, I, I've ran with so many uh, Christians in the, in the past who they want you to con, uh, to go out and preach and all that stuff, but they're 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 you know they wasn't an example. Like they would rather me be on the street corner preaching repentance and turn from your sins and wickedness and all that stuff, but they don't have any. They deny the power thereof. It wasn't real for them. It was some kind of um, acknowledgement that didn't really transform you know, their, yeah. their life. Yeah. They had nothing to give people, you know, drug addicts and pray for you and all that kind of stuff, but it wasn't tangible. So I think that that's the beauty of what we have, that our peace is, is tangible. It's transferable. It's unconditional. And, uh, and, and God is, you know, for everyone. He wants to reveal his heart to everyone and he uses us to do that. And so, um, you know, uh, shared another meme and it was like uh you know i often often pray that you know or you know it said i often want want to ask god why is there famine in the world why is there their death why is there decay why are there people fighting why are families falling apart why is all this wickedness in the world and i sometimes i ponder i want to ask god these things but i'm afraid that he's going to ask me the same questions is that we are god's workmanship he uses us to bring forth peace he, bring, he uses us to Good. bring forth righteousness and his statutes and love and justice in the earth. And so we have to get aligned. We have to quit playing the religious games and just get aligned to his will. His will is love. His will is edification. His will is empowerment and, uh, and, and grace and peace that comes through Jesus Christ. And so we're, 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 you know, we're the walking um, embodiment of that. We're the only Bible that many people will ever read. So we, we, need, to, we need to be tactful and, and know that. That's so good. So good. Well, um, I, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this section up. And uh, I think in part two, what I want to look at is the change from within. How, what can we share with people that will help them understand how important it is to change from the inside out? So um, we'll look forward to doing that section um, in our next session. So join us after this, and we'll uh, see you all later. Take care. Thank you for taking time out to listen to Kingdom Talks. You can find out more about Kingdom Talks Media and our mission to unite in faith and grow as mature sons at KingdomTalksMedia.com. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, Fringe Radio Network, and many more places. Go to our website to find links to all of our media outlets, as well as fantastic online courses and conferences, including the life-changing interactive course, Ultimate Impact. And last but not least, we ask that you consider partnering with us to fulfill the mission to get these messages to the world. To become a partner, go to the Partnership tab on our website. Thank you, and until next time, live a blessed life Keep carrying us in your heart and sharing us wherever hearts are open.